Blueberry conducts physician-led support groups, helping people live healthier, happier lives, free from metabolic disease. And on our podcast, Blueberry with Dr. Lori Martis, we bring to you nutrition and lifestyle medicine experts and extraordinary guests to empower and inspire you with the knowledge and stories of plant-based lifestyle so that you can be your healthiest self. Welcome to the podcast. I'm Dr. Lori Marvis, and today I'm really excited to interview one of my favorite people, patients, is Dennis Haddock. How are you today? I'm doing just wonderful. Thank you. It's great to see you. It's good to see you again, too. So Dennis and I spent some time together in North Carolina. We'll get to that in a moment, but Dennis has a wonderful transformation story, but let's just kind of walk through your uh, life's journey as far as your medical health and all those things, because I think you're going to really touch a lot of people because they're going to, your story is similar to theirs. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, Dennis was well until? (laughs) Well, I was, I thought I was pretty well until I, I turned 50 and at that point, um, I was a little overweight, maybe 220 pounds or so. And I had a small stroke or a TIA, what they call. And um, that sort of started the downward spiral. Uh, All of a sudden, I had a lot of doctors looking at me and they put me on blood thinners and they noticed that uh, I was retaining water. So they started giving me diuretics and Um, after that, it just seemed like a little bit of a downward spiral. I started seeing the doctor every three months and it seemed like he started giving me more information about, oh, well, you're, um, pre-diabetic and I don't like the way your cholesterol is running and, uh, you're starting to suffer from gout and everything just sort of did that downward spiral in the next seven or eight years uh, and he, they put me on gout medicine and they put me on cholesterol medicine, uh, high blood pressure medications. And they started giving me uh, diabetes medicines, oral at first. And then they started adding to the diabetes medicine. So the next thing I know, I was taking four oral medications for diabetes. And uh, right about that time, Um, about 2012, I moved from Chicago, Illinois to uh, Kansas City. I I took a new job uh, out in the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. And so we moved out there, got another doctor, and he wasn't really happy with what the medications were, uh, were doing for me, especially the diabetes medications. So he said, well, let's add Victoza to it. So I was taking a full dose of Victoza and about a year later, he still wasn't real happy. About then I was a little over 230 pounds. And so he started me um, on an an injectable medication, uh, insulin related called um, uh, Traceba. Yeah, that's a long acting insulin. Mm -hmm. Right, right. And it seemed like every time I went to go see him every three months, he would say, now we better kick this up a little bit. So we started out at 25. And by the time I got to um, the immersion study, I was on 54 units of Traceba, these four oral medications, and Victoza, and I still was on the blood pressure medication and the uh, the um, cholesterol medication and the gout medication. And uh, then, you know, I got to the immersion study. And I once I got to um, um, the, the part of my life where I retired from the Federal Reserve in Kansas City and moved to a vacation home, which turned into our retirement home down here in Mena, Arkansas, which is in the western part of Arkansas. Um, I started being a little more active, started losing some weight. I was down to about, oh, I think uh, about 205 pounds um, in August when we started um, negotiating, I guess is the word, 
to um, get into this immersion study. And I continued to lose some weight and being very active and doing a lot of yard work and playing some golf and stuff like that. So I was about uh, almost 200, maybe just a little under 200 by the time I got to the immersion study. And um, oh. that's, that's pretty much the journey that I've had since I was 50. I'm 72 now. Well, I, I want to go back a second. Okay. <laughs> so you like, you just went through a whole couple of decades <laughs> yeah. and there's a lot going on there, right? So you're kind of following the same path of many Americans, right? You get one diagnosis, add another medication, another diagnosis, who knows what side effects are you being treated for as well. Can you walk me through mentally what's going on? Like what, what is Dennis thinking to himself when all this is occurring? Well, when I had the original TIA, you know, they said, okay, well, we need to give you this medication and we need to put you on Plavix and some other uh, blood thinners. So they said, okay, well, if you don't listen to us, things are only going to get worse. You're going to get another stroke. So it wasn't like I was bullied, but it, it sort of, you know, sort of opened my eyes and said, okay, I better start listening to these guys. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in my 40s, they would say, hey, you know, you're overweight, you should change your diet. You should. And I went, yeah, 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 you know, uh, suffering from that male testosterone type of thing where, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I'm better. I know better than you. I'm, I'll do it all right. I'm, I'm okay. And once I had the stroke, it was like a wake up call. And I started listening to the doctors very carefully. And I would ask a few questions. But I would never say, okay, well, is there some type of other option I can use? Or how long am I going to be on this medication? Or is it to just treat it? Or are you going to do something to cure me on this? Those type of thoughts never entered my mind. Even as they were giving me this medication and upping this dose, they would they'd say, okay, well, here's the results of your blood test. So, and they would say, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. We, we can give you this treatment or this pill and um, this will normalize your situation. And at the same time, they would never say, okay, we need you to get to a dietitian, or we need you to stop doing this or we need you to get on an exercise program. It was always toss them another pill. Get that script out of your pocket, write me a prescription and give it to me and say, okay, we'll see you in three months. That's, an That's the way it worked for like a, a decade, two, almost two decades. Wow. So that must have been extremely frustrating in the sense of you like at the whim of whatever is happening. You don't, you, nobody gave you the, the knowledge to empower yourself to make just different food choices to see a different path or journey. And that's, that's exactly correct. And, uh, as a sidebar, my uh, older daughter and her husband are out in California and they're vegans. Mm -hmm. And they used to send me DVDs and different books. They sent me the Plant Pure uh, uh, recipe book and they sent me um, one of the DVDs, uh, um, Cowspiracy, I think it was. And they said, you should release look at this and think about changing your lifestyle. And I went, yeah, 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 yeah. And just sort of, I didn't want, I don't want to say I blew them off, but I just said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it my way. <laughs> I got, I got to this age by doing it my way. I'm going to do it my way. You've been, you see, you seem to be okay. Well, I feel like part of that is, is that it's such a normal affairs for Americans to be on multiple medications that we've normalized not being well. That it's like, wait, you're not taking meds. That's so unusual. Why don't you take medications? You know, do you feel like yeah. that? Sometimes I get that look like, you did what? <laughs> well, we'll get to what you did here in a minute, which is you were the superstar of the of the immersion for sure. So, okay, so you have this couple of decades of getting sick, but what got you sick? Can you tell me a little bit about your eating patterns prior to the diagnosis with the TIA? Well, it started out uh, when I was a kid. My father was 
uh, in the pork processing business for 40 <laughs> years. And when we were kids, we ate some kind of pork six days a week. I mean, it was, uh, I think I'd mentioned to you before, my mother used to make fried chicken on Sundays. And we thought we it was a delicacy because mm. we were eating pork all of So I was a big meat eater. And I'd always been a big meat eater. Uh, you know, I, I bought uh, upscale um, barbecue grills and smokers and you know, I had all of that equipment and I would do that all summer long, make steaks and ribs and you name it. I would, you know, I would, I would grill it, you know, wow. and, uh, um, and so I was ingesting all of that fat and oil and uh, animal uh, carbohydrates and stuff. So yeah. it's just yeah, the way my lifestyle was, you know. So no carbohydrates, so maybe some animal protein, fat, and oh well, <laughs> some other things. Sure, of course, yeah. animal protein, fat. Um, but I'm curious about the, um, you know, your dad's health. So if he was doing this, how what happened for him? Did he have any health issues? Um, he started going downhill in his 70s and hmm. uh, broke his hip and never really recovered, and wound up having uh, liver cancer. Oh, and uh, surprisingly, he beat that, but then he passed away from prostate cancer. Hmm. So, wow. But he lived until he was 78. So, well, we have, that, we have plans making you live longer than that. Well, thank you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see if, if uh, that, that time will tell. We absolutely will do our best. And so, so now let's get back to last fall. So um, you well, and I were invited to be partake in a plant pure immersion. I was a physician and you were one of the, the test patients. And we went and lived in this house, beautiful house, right? This huge yes, house. Gorgeous. Yeah. Right it's, off the golf course. Yep. Right 10 off days. the Greensboro Country Club golf course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Spent 10 days. So what was, how did you react when you first were invited? How did that all come about? Well, that's, that's a pretty funny story because my, actually they sent the email invitation to my wife and, uh, you know, I, she, and she said, you should go to this. And I, I looked at, I looked it over and I went, I'm not going to Greensboro, North Carolina. What are you kidding? That's a two day drive. She goes, well, you could, you know, you could fly. And that's a different story. It was like a 14 hour, uh, odyssey just to try to get from rural Arkansas to, to Greensboro. So mm -hmm. uh, I said, no, nah, I don't think I'm going to do it. And I, did, I didn't realize that she had sent a copy of the email to my daughter in California. So all of a sudden, I'm getting, I'm getting hit from both sides saying, you, you should do this. Go and do this. This is a chance of a lifetime. So I sort of succumbed to the peer pressure, if you will. And I took the two-day ride out to, out to Greensboro. The women in your life, you know, they're looking out for you. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> naturally, you know, once I said yes, then I had to go through that uh, video interview and, mm -hmm. you know, get all the scheduling and all whatever else we had to do. Just There's a lot to, of just logistics. get everything going. Yes. Oh, lots more than of logistics. I would have imagined. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize that the interview was basically with the guys that were going to be videotaping it. Mm -hmm. um, Elsa didn't really, uh, or I should say, Ella really didn't ask that many questions. But the guys from the video crew, they were asking this question and that Mark question. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, well, that's I, a whole, I got out of that. I got out of that. I was pretty impressed. <laughs> well, you're quite likable and easy to talk to, and you have a great story. So Marco and Brian, who basically followed all of us around for 10 days <laughs> and filmed this um, for this upcoming documentary uh, release. I'm not sure when. Hopefully very soon. It's exciting. We saw the rough draft. It was, like, it was really fun uh, to yeah, see. Yeah, it was. Um, but the interesting thing is what happened during these 10 days from your perspective? Well, I walked in there and I'm going, okay, here I am. Yep. <laughs> and uh, we started 
first thing we had a little sit down with everybody, got the introductions done and um, you know, um, met the, um, the, the chefs and everybody and uh, met you. And then we had our first meal and then we wound up going and taking blood pressure medications and you know, just basically going through the, the introductory process of who's taking what and what dosage and, and, and uh, I guess right after the first night, we started um, subtracting medications or mm -hmm. subtracting uh, the amount of dosage Mm -hmm. um, and especially in terms of the blood pressure, oh. the blood pressure stayed normal, even I, though you took me yeah, off of those medications within a day. I was as flabbergasted. You were walking around. <clears throat> so we ended up stopping. Was it nine medications for you? I think. I think nine? that I think it was 10 altogether. 10. ten okay. All I know, there was a lot. And so here I am measuring Dennis's blood pressure normal getting low I'm like oh, we're stopping that you were like we immediately stopped insulin we stopped oral medications for diabetes all of these things and you just continue to flourish i i know you were having some uh unsteadiness dizziness there for i don't know if that's gotten better but i know there was a little bit of improvement there um, it's gotten it's gotten better yeah yeah, oh, that's fabulous. Um, Cause I was really thinking part of that was side effects of medications. And I wasn't quite sure the significance of, you know, the medication, if it was other stuff as well, since you had a history of that TIA and some other things. But I mean, I was impressed at how quickly you, you improved. So tell us a little bit about from day one to day 10, how did you, how were you feeling? How were you feeling? Well, and what, um, by the way, we're eating all plants. So you went strictly from eating meat to whole overnight whole food plant-based diet prepared by Kim and Federico of um, some delicious plant foods, Kim Campbell. Absolutely. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got rid of all the oil, all the process, processed sugar and mm -hmm. all the meat products, including all the dairy and cheese and whatnot. And the chefs were just unbelievable. Not only did they make such wonderful food for us, but they were more than willing to show us uh, their little tricks of the trades. And mm -hmm. if you wanted to get a cheesy taste, you would add this. And if it was, you needed a buttery taste, you added this. And mm -hmm. uh, they were just super. I, I, I can't, uh, I can't begin to tell you how much I was impressed by them people. <laughs> and yeah, I watched, uh, I watched Chef Fernando's book. I mean, oh, and that's actually, great. Um, I still have Kim's phone number and I give her a call every once, once in a while if I'm stuck uh, or I, I don't understand what's going on on a particular recipe or um, the food that I'm trying to prepare. And she's mm. Johnny on the spot, willing to tell me anything that she, uh, that she can about plant pure nation and plant pure cooking. Mm -hmm. And uh I'm so impressed that my wife continues to eat what I cook, you know, since I'm, I'm the retiree and she's still going to work. So I'm here all day making, uh, while well, I make a lunch for her and, um, and then I, you know, make the, the evening meal. So every once in a while she goes off and has, you know, a meat uh, meal or has some candy or whatnot but other than that uh, she's been staying right with me with the uh. the plant-based stuff and that's been a real help because mm -hmm. uh, naturally you, you need uh, a support group mm -hmm. or someone close to you that will support your your situation and your thoughts and and uh, what, how you want to go forward with it mm -hmm. and I can't say enough about it she's just been an angel mm -hmm. well that's fantastic so now you're you know six months out and how's your health doing now like how much weight have you lost what's your doctor saying uh well uh, like i said i haven't been to the doctor since november mm -hmm. um uh right now i'm at 150 pounds wow dennis that's that's what close to 50 pounds lost so i lost 35 pounds since i saw you last oh wow so wow. uh naturally i lost a lot of muscle weight so i'm not uh, as energetic as I was, I take a lot more breaks. I'm taking a nap and whatnot. 
but I'm still playing golf and still doing the yard work and um, I'm still eating like a fiend, but I'm just not gaining weight. So I called Kim and she said, okay, we'll start getting some uh, and adding some protein shakes, get yourself some organic protein mix and add it to the, uh, um, add it to the blender and, you know, just make sure you have a little more going into your system every day. So, um, so I'm fluctuating between 150 and 155 right now. So at least I'm not continuing to lose weight. Mm. And um, I'm doing a little more exercising with resistance uh, bands mm. and, and small dumbbells and stuff like that, just to try and uh, gain some muscle mass back. Yeah, so, so that's the, the only side effect. But other than that, it's been a win-win situation. I'm sleeping better. Mm. Um, Tell me about I've got your a real good attitude. I'm sorry. Tell me about your dizziness because I know that was affecting you uh, for a bit. I, I still get a little dizzy in the morning, but I can. It's one of those things. That I, for some reason, I can walk it off. Mm. Once I get up and I start moving around, I'm mm -hmm. fine. Great. So and I, know, I told the doctor in November about it. And I told her in August, and they gave me some exercises uh, for the neck where you, you know, you lean uh, your your head over the side of the bed. An Epley maneuver. For 10 seconds. Yes, and that helps. That helped a little initially, mm. but lately I haven't had to even do those exercises. Yeah, those are meant to help with any type of basically loose rocks in your ears. <laughs> And yes. uh, it's the uh, little rocks telling certain nerves that you're one way, but you're actually this way. It makes you dizzy. Um, that's vertigo, basically. But I want to get back to the weight loss. And, you know, for you, that was one thing, right? Because your appetite wasn't like you weren't always a lot of hungry, too. I, know, I remember when we were there, you almost said, I have to force myself to eat because I'm honestly, I'm still so full. So that's the Absolutely. key here is you got to eat enough food. And so that would mean you just need to hone in on those higher caloric foods, right? So more grains, more beans, some healthy fats, some nuts, some avocado, and that'll help satiate you and give you the more energy. Because if you're not getting enough calories, you just have a higher metabolism. We set that off. That should give you more energy. You should feel more energetic. Um, but if you're not getting enough calories with the weight loss, but yes, you definitely need to up your protein, which is going to be beans and whole grains. Um, and then the resistance training is really important too. Well, uh, you know, during the winter time, it, it wasn't uh, a situation where I was really monitoring the weight. Mm. And uh, to tell you the truth, the first time I stepped on a scale, I was like 165 and I went, what? I need to change the battery on this, on the scale or something, you know. And, uh, you know, you're wearing long sleeve shirts and sweaters and everything. And your pants must really be falling looked, off of you, though, did it? I, I, well, I noticed that, yes, but I hadn't really looked in a, in a mirror to see how skinny I was. And I didn't mm. realize that I was losing all sorts of muscle mass in, mm. the, uh, in the shoulder areas. So I looked a little bony there, whereas I was never considered anywhere near bony. Yeah. Um, it, well, when you lose weight and it's very quick, you're going to lose muscle mass. But the idea would be to slow that down with eating more higher caloric foods. But it's sometimes it can be really hard um, on a public set with certain individuals. They it's a struggle to eat enough. So definitely, well, we eat a lot of garbanzo beans and black beans and avocados. So good. I'm, I'm trying to do uh, as much as I can to to get those high calorie fruits or vegetables that's good. In, into the into the plant. That's good. That's good. That's it. But there are some patients who really struggle to lose weight. And then there's others who cannot gain weight once they're on this. They, they lose weight and then they're like, I can't eat enough. But uh, it's pretty common. But the the point being, though, you've reversed all of these conditions that you had, diabetes, hypertension, gout, um, and now the cholesterol, there's just a little bit of cholesterol medication left that your doctor's trying to see if she can convince, be convinced to, to pull you off. Yeah, I was kind of surprised that uh, 
you know, she was so happy to see this and uh, she gave me the old, uh, uh, my father used to call it the old fish eye where it's, you know, you know, when I told her, I says, I'm not taking any of these medications anymore. She goes, wait, all of them? You know? <laughs> and I said, you know, um, they didn't want to take me off the cholesterol medicine during this immersion study. And she goes, well, no, no, hold on. So she was, she was um, very adverse to the idea that I should just stop the medications. Mm -hmm. So I literally had to talk her into saying, okay, cut your dosages in half. And so that's mm -hmm. what I've been doing for mm -hmm. the last five months or so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, with your history of your TIA, that's important to make sure everything is is good and kosher and you stabilize and you're feeling good on the diet and sticking with it and all. So that's fabulous. So, I mean, I, I don't know if anyone else that I've pulled off that many medications in short, such a short period of time. I mean, I've stopped a lot of medications, I think four or five, <laughs> but for you, I was like, honestly, Dennis, I think you're going to be fine without any of these. And so I still have the, I was, should have got it, but I saw the little card that you gave me with your list of medications. <laughs> That was my going away gift uh, from you. That's right. Uh, right. Yep. Yeah, it's still, I still have it in it. Uh, that was, uh, that's a lot of fun because that really is the most medications I've ever stopped in a, in a patient was yours in goodness, 24, 48 hours. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I can't thank you enough for all of the help and support that you and all of your staff and the staff in plant pure has done for us. And, um, uh, one final thought is I, I, I thought about it afterwards and I, I'm still um, amazed that the doctors that I had in Chicago and Kansas City and down here in Mina would never try and consolidate or say, okay, well, there's a new pill out. So don't take these three, take this one instead. Mm -hmm. uh, a good example was uh, I've got some chronic neck pain. So um, I'm able to get some steroid shots every 10 weeks for it. And in the course of talking with the neurologist who's giving me the injections, I explained my situation. And he said, you're on warfarin? He says, how long have you been on warfarin? I said, oh, since I was 50. He goes, what? He goes, don't you know that you don't need to be on warfarin, just take an aspirin. And I said, well, everybody told me that since I had a clot inside my heart, that I had to stay on warfarin for the rest of my life. He goes, you mean no one has gone back and reviewed the stuff you were taking? He goes, I'm telling you right now, throw that warfarin away and start taking an aspirin. And he's the first doctor who ever mm. told me anything about getting rid of this and just taking this other than you, of course. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, kudos for him for looking that and going, what? No, I, I'm amazed. I've seen patients in every single state in the United States um, because I have all the licenses and I'm, you know, doctors are doing the best they can, but sometimes I'm astounded. I'm like, this isn't even following general guidelines. I think people are just so overwhelmed um that they they're just writing scripts to try and get people out the door and you know I, I i don't know it's just it's an unfortunate circumstance that we're in right now and so um the patients are the ones that end up suffering though um because of that <laughs> I, I believe you're entirely correct and everything that we spoke about and watched in the videos during that immersion study just reinforced that i remember the doctor in chicago I would go see him and he he would be pulling that script book mm -hmm. out of his back pocket every time he saw me. I told him, I said, hey, you should just get a holster for that thing. Because <laughs> he was constantly quick, quick draw, huh? He was constantly putting me on different medications. Oh. And no one ever said, well, well, you don't really need that anymore. Yeah. Everybody just wanted to add on, which is uh, something we discussed in some of the round table discussions we had in the immersion study mm -hmm. on how 
it appears that, you know, Big Pharma just wants the doctors to continue to give you medications to treat what's wrong with you instead of trying to figure out how to make you better or how to get you better by lifestyle changes or mm -hmm. taking you off some of these medications and giving you uh, exercise programs or mm -hmm. sending you a, to a dietitian or something, you know, other than mm -hmm. just filling out another script. Mm -hmm. No, you're exactly right. It's so important that we take ownership of your own health, right? Because we're one of two countries in the world, I believe, that uh, allow pharmaceutical companies to advertise directly to the patient. I, I feel like that's a bit of a conflict of interest that those drugs should be only directed to the patient as needed. You shouldn't be, oh, by the way, you have diabetes, go ask your doctor if you need this. You know, that makes no sense to me. Why we allow yeah. that? Well, I'm, and I'm one of those people that's so old. I remember when they couldn't uh, advertise prescription medications on TV, but mm. it's a brave new world. What can I well, say? Well, people, uh, people, uh, yeah, you go, you make it to Congress. You didn't make it there without being bought somewhere along the way. Yeah. Most of the time, um, I'd be impressed if someone was there without any clause in them from some government, you know, some corporate entity. Not that we shouldn't have corporate entities. I'm not saying that at all. I'm all for free enterprise and, you know, making your way and being successful, but not on, not off the expense of, you know, droning on and pushing a, an element in society that's just not helping us get well. Um, yeah, but we do need drugs. I mean, I'm not saying that we shouldn't have them there. They've been life-saving for many people, but at the same time, we've got to, we've got to have better regulation on that. Um, it's just unfortunate for yeah. sure. Well, what are your plans now? So now you have this new lease on life. <laughs> Tell me what, what are well, your big plans? Well, I guess I, I'm looking forward to uh, a couple of uh, video interviews. Yep, you got some coming your way. Yeah, Brian <laughs> said that they are going to come over here and do a, a six month follow up. Nice. So they said they're going to get on the road and, and go to different participants of the immersion study nice. so and then we'll um, they said they were probably going to do that next month nice and nice. Uh, we haven't finalized or figured out exactly when those people that uh, are supporting you are going to come around yeah so you're going to be uh, interviewed for our website as well so that's exciting so I mean you're turning into quite the little star there so you better, uh, that, you know. that definitely wasn't my intent. As you recall, <laughs> uh, during that first roundtable where everybody introduced themselves, um, when it came to my turn, all I said was, I'm here to try and uh, see if I can lower the dose on insulin. That was the only expectation I had. Mm -hmm. And six months later, I'm just, I'm still astounded. Mm. That's I amazing. wake up every morning and feel blessed, thanking the Lord. Yeah. So overall, less medications, feeling better, just working on halting the weight loss, gaining you know more muscle mass because you had such rapid weight loss, and then yeah. going from there. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, I'm still taking the B12 and the C and the D and the E and the zinc. So it's not like I'm I got rid of my pill regimen. <laughs> I'm just using them for vitamins. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, honestly, when you look at supplements, um, B12 is the one non-negotiable. And in some cases you might need a D, omegas, things like that. But overall, you should be getting most of your vitamins and your supplements, uh, I mean, your minerals and stuff from your food. So as long as you're eating, like we talked about the colors of the rainbow and oh, yeah. different food categories, you're good to go. Um, but yeah, so you're, you're doing great. You're a great story of how quickly things can improve. You were already moving and moving in the right direction. You know, you'd lost some weight with your exercise and increased activity when you moved to Arkansas, but then switching the diet just up that tenfold. And so that was the exciting part. I couldn't believe that the switch was turned so quickly. I mean, just, mm -hmm. it just seemed like, well, like you said, in 48 hours, it was I, unbelievable. I thought it was, it would have been dangerous to keep you on all those medications. That would have been medical negligence, honestly. So, um, 
<laughs> yeah, you, you came in there with medications that were very easy to stop. So your blood pressure was absolutely gorgeous the whole time. And so, um, yeah, fantastic. And it's still staying normal. I check it once a day or once every other day, and it's still hanging still under 130 over 80. Mm. It's always under those two numbers. So what is your, um, your A1C before and then what's your a1c now do you have a recent the number? last a1c i had was five nine five nine and what was it before you came to the immersion uh six six i think it was six six i remember it being in the sixes and that was on four oral medications and one and and insulin or three orals and one no injectable four, four orals the victoza and it, so six Six diabetic medications. Six diabetic medications. You were at six six. Now we stopped all of those, and now your A one C is five point nine. It's yep. <laughs> yeah. There is no drug <laughs> that will do what's happened to you in your body. Like nothing's going to reverse it, other than changing the input of what you're putting in your mouth. I mean, that's just an, a brilliant example of what ha can happen. Amazing. And I, like I said, I'm feeling healthier. I don't have the night cramps. Mm. Uh, and uh, I don't feel bloated. I don't have to hit the recliner right after the meal. Mm. Um, mm. It just goes on and on. You know, I, other than this, uh, this weight loss or muscle loss situation, everything is perfect. Yeah. And that, that's the, you know, sometimes that can happen when you have someone, like I said, any amount of, when you're changing diet, you can have rapid loss, you're going to lose fat and muscle. And so that's, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a situation. You definitely want to <laughs> increase those calories, consume more of those uh, higher density foods. But again, um, your overall risk factors have declined dramatically for heart disease and other stroke, um, all the complications from diabetes, your heart health, I mean, kidneys, all of it. So that was fantastic. What advice, two questions, what do you eat on a day-to-day -day basis? People would like to know. And then also what advice would you give to someone who's considering switching to a plant-based diet? Well, first of all, um, in terms of the diet, most, most days I start out with a large bowl of oatmeal and a little maple syrup in it and coffee and tomato juice. That would be a normal breakfast. For lunch, I would either uh, have a black bean burger or a huge salad, or I make some uh, homemade vegetable soup out of my homemade vegetable stock nice. that Kim showed me how to make with all of the peelings and leftovers, leftover cuttings from all the vegetables that I cut up. Um, and then uh, we, we eat a lot of lentils. I got a red dal uh, lentil uh, recipe that I make. Mm. And I uh, make a lot of, a lot of uh, dinner entrees out of the Plant Pure recipe book. Um, um, New England chowder is a big favorite here. Like you said, I make the black bean burgers. I also uh, go and either get um, uh, spinach tortillas or uh, I just found some sweet potato tortillas. Oh. And I, I make, uh, I make a, our, my own hummus out of garlic and, um, and garbanzo beans. So I'll make a, a vegetable tortillas for us. She calls them burritos because I wrap them up pretty well. <laughs> um, and, you know, I add all of the different vegetable colors, black beans and garbanzo beans and onions and avocados and tomatoes, a little salsa. Um, so that's, that's the kind of stuff that I make for dinner. Mm. And um, so your second question was, what Advice? would I tell someone? Yeah, so you have someone who's considering, they're listening to this going, Man, I sound like Dennis. I had a TIA or I had high blood pressure or I have type 2 diabetes. What would you suggest for those folks who are contemplating it? What well, usually what I do is um, I'll take 
uh, I'll take a Tupperware bowl full of like uh, the New England chowder or um, or a black bean burger or something like that. And I'll bring it over to them mm. and, and say, have this for lunch and see, you know, see how you like it. In fact, the, one of the other things that I've been doing is I've been making um, what they call raspberry chocolate chunk brownies, Ooh. which are black bean based. And you get uh, the simple raspberry fruit that doesn't have uh, any of the corn syrup or sugar, added sugar. And then I'll use uh, uh, the black, not the black, the dark uh, chocolate powder. Mm, cocoa powder? Cocoa powder. Mm -hmm. And I'll put a walnut in the, on top of each brownie. And I'll bring mm -hmm. those and I'll just say, hey, have a brownie. <laughs> and, you know, they'll have it and they'll go, wow, this, this doesn't taste too bad. I said, that's, that's the kind of stuff that I make and eat. Mm. And I always get to look like, what? This isn't made out of a mix. <laughs> so, like, no, it's made out of black beans. <laughs> so you get <laughs> usually if someone's interested, I'll start feeding them some some of the stuff that I make. And mm. I said, here, you could you could take this New England chowder that tastes like clam chowder, mm -hmm. you know, because you're putting the nori in there and everything. So you don't have to have the meat. There's enough things that uh, that they've devised that you can get the texture and the, uh, in the t in the same taste range, mm -hmm. and you start thinking, okay, well, I'm eating something that's going to make me healthy, as opposed to making uh, eating something that's going to make me sick or keep me sick. That's a very and I've got I've got a couple of people in um, in Florida uh, from our uh, Christian Motorcycle Association group who went and ordered the Plant Pure Nation recipe book and have started doing that and I've got uh, um, someone up in Chicago who's also doing it and uh, and naturally my my daughter and her husband out in California are just tickled pink with all the different things that I'm I'm sending them photos of the, I'm making this and I'm cooking that and every once in a while I'll take a picture of the scale and send it to them and <laughs> they're just happy as punch they are oh well not and only we've got you and Plant Pure Nation to thank for that. Uh, th that was strictly Plant Pure Nation I was just invited to come along it was a lot of fun and you know Nelson and Kim Campbell they've and Dr. T. Colin Campbell, uh, they've just been, his book was the reason I went plant-based after, you know, I started looking into it as uh, the China study. So we, I owe a lot to the Campbells as do you, and we all just want to thank them for that opportunity. It was fun to be a part of your journey, but I, I feel like you're doing exactly right. You're, you're just, you know, I, I love the fact that you're going to give the ripple effect to other people in your life, the people that, you know, in Florida and in Chicago, this is crying, you know, Cross continental, and um, what a wonderful opportunity for you to to help someone else find health. That's fantastic. Well, I, I'm I'm thinking that uh, that should be something that I should start focusing on a little more yeah. now that I can really show them a success story. And there, uh, there's that rough draft of the, the documentary. Mm -hmm. that I can pass to somebody and I say, okay, just take a look at this and look at me. This is six months later. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions, give me a jingle or come on by. I'll be more than happy to spend some time with you and explain everything that I've been doing and everything that's been happening to me. Well, but, you know, and I'm seriously considered, considering about going back to Plant Pure and investigating trying to start a pod. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Um, and um, one of the things, and it, it's not so much my idea, I have to admit, it's my wife's idea because uh, she said, you know, we don't go out as much. We don't go to the, because the vegan um, choices in a lot of these the restaurants here in this small town are little or none. In fact, uh, the, the only one that I can think of right now is we go to the Italian restaurant and get the eggplant 
And there's a guy, uh, the chef over there, his name's Ari. So he's got eggplant a la Ari. So I went back and I said, okay, what's the deal on this? And he said, I don't give you any gravy or red sauce or marinara. He says, I make a sauce out of uh, sherry and wine and uh, garlic and onion. Mm. And he says, and I, you know, I reduce it so there's no, you know, there's no alcohol in it. And he'll put that over angel hair pasta. Oh, nice. And you get a nice slab of roasted um, eggplant. So we go when we go out, we go out for that. Oh, wow. Now, then in a pod, you can have your own potlucks and different things. And who knows the number of lives you could change there. Well, and I was just thinking, because I'm in a small town, you only know so many people here. Mm -hmm. In the surrounding towns, you don't know who's going to, you know, jump yep. up and say, hey, I'd like to be a part of this. Yep. And I'm sure you realize that being in a small town, driving 20 or 30 miles just for dinner. That's normal. People do it all the time. Yeah. That's 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 par for course. <laughs> well, when you when you have to go 80 miles to go to Sam's Club. Yeah. You know, I, that, that's my point. <laughs> I've been there more than once. There's a reason I'm living yeah. in a larger city now. <laughs> I literally can walk a mile down to Starbucks and see the, the local grocery store. It's literally uh, nine, nine tenths of a mile. Um, well, that is fantastic. Well, Dennis, I, I don't want to keep more of your time, but thank you so much for sharing your story and also your struggles, right? Because this is a journey. It's a, uh, you know, it's, we always hear these wonderful recoveries and transformations, but you know, the rapid weight loss and now you're, you know, eating more and getting more of the muscle mass back and getting, because as we get older, that's, that's hard to do to anyway. So we really have to be, pay attention to that. So I think it's a really important point to bring out and that um, it doesn't mean you shouldn't go on a plant-based diet. You should absolutely embrace this because look at what you did cure is the things that are going to kill you. And, um, you know, that, that potential is greatly reduced now. And so I'm super excited to see where you're going to be in another six months and maybe a pod on the way. And what a wonderful, wonderful opportunity. So thank you. Well, thank you very much. I really enjoyed this. And I, like I said before, I really appreciate everything that everyone connected with plant pure has done for me and it's been a real joy seeing you and speaking with you again yes thank you thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed that video before you go though please hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you'll be notified whenever we release any new videos we upload a new episode of blueberry with dr Lori marvis on friday now, if you'd rather listen to the podcast, you can find us on all the major platforms such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, and even Spotify. If you're looking for amazing resources to help you start a plant-based diet, sustain a plant-based diet, exercise, recipes, or anything wellness, we got you covered there too. Because at Blueberry, we actually provide physician-led support groups to help people live happier, healthier lives and free from metabolic disease. Don't forget to check out our website at blueberry.health and thanks again for watching.